base launch trajectory and countdown net, pad is clear. 10, 9, 8, Launch auto sequence seven, has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go for launch. Separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us once again for the webcast of the Arabsat Beta 8 mission. My name is Ronnie Foreman, and I'm a sales manager here at SpaceX, joining you from our headquarters in Hawthorne, California. I'll be your host as we follow Falcon 9, taking the Arabsat Beta 8 payload to geostationary orbit from Florida's Space Launch Complex 40. If you've been following along, you know we had to stand down during Tuesday's launch attempt due to poor weather at the Cape. Although weather is looking a bit better today, it continues to be a watch item. We're hoping to find some clear weather though in time for our T0 of 12.30 a.m. Eastern. So we began propellant loading on the vehicle at T minus 35 minutes. Our customer today is Arabsat, a satellite operator and leading satellite services provider carrying over 650 TV channels, 245 radio stations and paid TV networks in more than 60 countries. The payload on board our second stage today, Vader 8, was built by Airbus and will provide connectivity over Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and Central Asia. It features Airbus's innovative space demonstrator, Telio, to provide space-to-ground optical communications at gigabit speeds. Today's launch is our second with Arabsat. We first launched Arabsat 6A on our Falcon Heavy rocket in 2019. We'll have more information from our customer a little bit later in the webcast. At T minus 11 minutes and 42 seconds and counting, the vehicle and spacecraft are both healthy. The range is ready to support, but if we're not able to launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow. On your screen right now is a live view of our two-stage Falcon 9 rocket that stands at around 230 feet tall, or about the length of four bowling lanes stacked end to end on top of each other. Starting from the bottom, the Falcon 9 first stage is equipped with nine Merlin M1D engines that help the vehicle accelerate through the Earth's atmosphere and into space before separating from the rest of the rocket. As you might be able to tell just by looking at it on your screen, the first stage, which is also referred to as the booster, makes up two thirds of the entire vehicle. Today's booster is flying for its 14th time tonight, having previously supported GPS-3, Space Vehicle 4 and 5, Inspiration 4, Axiom-1, Nilesat-301, OneWeb Launch-17, and seven Starlink missions. For today's launch, we will be attempting to recover our booster using our drone ship, Just Read the Instructions, which you can see on your screen there, is currently stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. Above the first stage is the second stage, which is what will carry the Arabsat Beta 8 payload to space. The second stage houses a single Merlin vacuum, or MVAC engine, which ignites after stage separation. The satellite right now is safely enclosed inside of the 17-foot diameter payload fairing that you can see on your screen. Made of carbon composite material, the fairing protects the satellite on, their, on its way to space. Once we reach the vacuum of space, the fairing halves will be jettisoned approximately three minutes into flight. Both fairing halves supporting today's mission are flight proven, with one half flying for its eighth time and the other for its ninth. After fairing separation, both of those fairing halves will begin falling back to Earth again, where we'll attempt to recover them using our recovery vessel, Bob. And right behind the rocket, or right next to it now on your screen, the large truss structure that you see is the transporter erector, or TE. We use the TE both to roll the rocket out to the pad and raise it to its vertical launch position. The TE also routes the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and satellite until Falcon 9 switches to internal power and clears the launch pad. At liftoff, the TE will retract away from the rocket in order to clear the way for Falcon 9's ascent. And with liftoff for today's mission currently set at 12.30 a.m. Eastern time, here are a few words from the president and CEO of Arabsat. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings and welcome to the Arabsat Badr 8 satellite launch. 
I'm thrilled to be here today to celebrate this momentous occasion with all of you. I'd like to express my gratitude to Airbus, our satellite manufacturer, for providing us with the latest technology and expertise, and for our standing relationship that has spanned over 25 years. Their contribution has been crucial to the success of this project, and we couldn't have done it without them. I would like to thank SpaceX for their valuable contribution to this project. Their expertise in launch services has been instrumental in bringing the Better 8 satellite to its uh, designated orbit today. And we are honored to have them as our partners. The Better 8 satellite is a state-of-the-art uh, addition to ArabSat orbital position 26 degrees east. It offers a wide range of services for satellite communications, television broadcasting, and information exchange in C and KU frequency bands. Better 8 will be joining our Better Satellite Network at ArabSat 26 East hotspot and bringing advanced technologies and extended coverage with multiple bands to enable broadcasting partners to get their content to their audience in MENA, Central Asia, and North and West Africa effectively. This new satellite enhances our capabilities and capacities to meet the modern and advanced solutions our customers expect. And we are excited about the opportunities that it will bring. Our leading role in the Middle East and North Africa regions for satellite broadcasting and communications will also be strengthened. The launch is one of ArabSat's most strategic projects, making significant milestones for our organization and the Arab world. This launch is one of ArabSat's most strategic projects, making a significant milestone for our organization and the Arab world. We are proud of our achievements and we look forward to continuing to provide innovative and reliable satellite solutions to our customers. Thank you for joining us to this journey and we are excited about what the future holds for ArabSat and our partners. As I mentioned earlier, ArabSat Beta 8 will be going to a geostationary orbit. We talk about a few different orbits in our various webcasts here at SpaceX, such as Low Earth Orbit, or LEO, and Medium Earth Orbit, or MEO. Our orbit today, geostationary orbit, Stage is usually called GEO for short. We just heard the call out there. The names for those orbits typically dictate how far into space they're going from Earth. In order to get the rocket and our payload into any orbit, the rocket has to not only go up really fast, but also has to go sideways. As we ascend, we tilt the engines. The technical term for that is called gimbling, and that turns the rocket horizontally. Now we're still going up, but we are also heading horizontally away from the launch pad in what we call a gravity turn. The rocket typically needs to go about 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and reach orbit. To help demonstrate this concept, imagine firing a cannon from a really high mountain. The cannonball will arc and then gravity will pull it down to Earth. As you increase the power, the cannonball will arc and land further and further away. Eventually, if you could continue to increase the power, the cannonball would be going so fast that it would end up in free fall around the Earth. Gravity is still pulling down on the cannonball, but it's going so fast that it never hits the ground. This arc, which constantly misses the Earth, is called an orbit. Falcon 9 effectively does the same thing as the cannon in this example. It provides enough power and horizontal velocity to the satellite Tanks on board the second stage that the spacecraft is placed in orbit around the Earth. You'll be able to see this tonight by watching the orientation of Falcon 9 right after liftoff. Be sure to keep an eye, on, eye out in just a few minutes. In just about 20 seconds here, we'll see the clamp arms that you can see just below the base of the fairing begin to open. When the clamp arms fully open beneath the fairing... Strongback retract has started. There, we actually heard the call out that strongback retract is about to begin. The TE is now going to pull away from the vehicle slightly in preparation for liftoff. The first stage is connected to a launch mount at the base of the TE, but the structure is hinged and a T-0 ground, ground hydraulic systems will pull the TE even further away from Falcon 9 as it lifts off. 
And as you've heard on the Nets call out there, we sometimes call the TE the strong back. And there on your screen now, you can see that the clamp arms have fully opened. At this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. The stages should finish loading propellant about a minute apart from each other. The first stage will finish up at about T minus three minutes and the second stage at T minus two. You can also see those white clouds drifting away from the side of the vehicle right now. Those are actually vented chilled gas from above the LOX tank liquid surface that we vent overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. When that gas comes out into the warm Florida air, it condenses into actual clouds. Stage one LOX load is complete. There's the call out that stage one LOX load has completed. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. Just inside of T minus two seconds, we light the Merlin 1D engines for liftoff. Right now, the Arabsat Vader 8 payload continues to be healthy, and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. With just about two and a half minutes before liftoff, weather continues to be a watch item, but we're moving forward to see if we can find some clear weather for our T0 of 1230 AM Eastern. The range is ready to support today's launch. But if for some reason we're not able to launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow around the same time. Stage two LOX load is complete. That call out over the nets means that the vehicle is now fully loaded with liquid oxygen. Ground gas close up. Again, that white cloud you see venting from the side of Falcon 9 is totally normal. Really lovely nighttime shot there, too. Falcon 9 is in startup. There's that call out that Falcon 9 has transitioned to internal power. We love to hear that call out. With that, the LD has announced that we have our final go for launch. So at T minus 37 seconds, all systems are go for the launch of Falcon 9 and Arabsat Vader 8. T minus 30 seconds. Moving through the clouds there, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from pad 40. Coming up next, we'll throttle down the nine Merlin engines on the first stage to prepare for max Q at about T plus one minute and 12 seconds. Power and telemetry nominal. Vehicles on the right track. 
Now, as you may already know, Max-Q is the pe period of flight with the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures. So it's one of the critical flight milestones we're tracking. Again, we expect that here in just about 10, supersonic. 10 seconds. And with that call out, we hear that Falcon 9 is moving faster than the speed of sound. Max Q. With that call out, we now have three events coming up in quick succession. So I'm going to talk through all of them right now. We'll start with MECO, followed by Stage SEP, and then SES-1. Main engine cutoff, or MECO, is where all nine M1D engines shut down on the first stage to slow the vehicle down in preparation for Impact the next event, has started. which is stage separation, or stage SEP for short. That's where the first stage separates from the second. Right after stage SEP, the first stage will start its journey back to Earth for landing on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. During that time, stage two will continue on its journey to space with a third event in this sequence, sequence second engine start one, or SES-1. This is where the MVAC engine lights up and propels the second stage along with the Aerovsat payload to orbit. Right after these three major events, the fairing halves will separate less than a minute after SES-1. So keep an eye out for that too. And again, all of these events are gonna start here in just about 10 seconds. And Miko. Stage separation. With that, we have confirmation of main engine cutoff, stage separation, and you can see there on the right hand side of your screen, second engine start one. While the first stage burn is in progress, we are expecting fairing. While the first second stage burn is in progress, excuse me, we are expecting fairing deployment as well. Fairing separation. Wow, oh, great view of fairing separation there on the right hand side of your screen. It is now T plus three minutes and 40 seconds into today's mission. In order to complete today's landing, the first stage has two Acquisition burns. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. The first stage has two burns left. Right now, we're watching the MVAC burn on the second stage. Next up, the first stage will perform its entry burn, where three of the Merlin 1D engines will reignite. This helps to slow the Falcon 9 first stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. That entry burn should start just about two minutes and 15 seconds from now, and will last about 20 seconds. Just in case you are just joining us, we had a successful liftoff today at 12.30 a.m. Eastern time from Pad 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. We had successful liftoff, MECO, stage SEP, fairing separation, and ignition of our second stage engine, which you can see on your screen right now. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories and hearing from Mission Control that both vehicles are right on track. The second stage burn is except, expected to last a few more minutes, and the first stage is expected to start its first of two planned burns in order to land on our drone ship. Interestingly, the Merlins on the first stage and second stage are quite similar. The Merlins on stage one are optimized for sea level, and these achieve about 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. The MVAC engine, which we're watching now, is optimized for 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. One of the other things we'll use to support landing of the first stage are the landing legs made of carbon, confi carbon fiber and aluminum honeycomb placed symmetrically around the outside of the vehicle. Those are stowed at the base of the booster and then deployed just prior to landing. As we come up on the start of that entry burn, just a quick reminder that this will be a three engine burn meant to slow down the first stage as it hits the thicker layers of the Earth's atmosphere.
And even though we are preparing for that stage one entry burn, we are still getting these great views from space of our second stage MVAC engine. We are expecting this burn of the MVAC to last another two minutes. Starting to get some views from the first stage on the left-hand side of your screen now, and you can continue watching the telemetry in the lower corner. Stage one FTS has saved. Stage one entry burn startup. There's the confirmation that we've started that first entry burn. Again, this is going to be the first of two before we hopefully stick the landing. Stage one entry burn shut down. There's confirmation that we've completed the stage one entry burn. Meanwhile, stage two continues on its trip to space. Both vehicles continue to follow anomalous trajectories. With confirmation of entry burn shut down, we have one more burn before the first stage attempts to land on our drone ship, and that's landing burn. During the first stage landing burn, a single Merlin engine will relight and slow the vehicle down for its 14th landing attempt on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Expected loss of signal, Cape. Stage two is in terminal guidance. The next major milestone we're Stage tracking. Transonic. The next major milestone we're tracking here is the call out that for second engine Stage cutoff two, one in just about ten seconds. You go one. Stage one landing burn. Nominal orbit insertion. There we've got the call out for second engine cutoff one and nominal orbit insertion on our second stage. Right now we are watching stage the stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. There you just saw a successful 14th landing for this particular booster, which also marks our 195th overall successful recovery of an orbital class rocket, including both Falcon 9 and heavy first stages. With confirmation of successful second engine cutoff and first stage landing, we're going to be in a coast phase until just before the second relight of our MVAC engine on the second stage, which will be followed by payload deployment. So sit tight and we'll see you back here around the T plus 28 minute mark.
Expected loss of signal, Bermuda.
Acquisition of signal, goodbye.
Welcome back to the live webcast for the Arabsat Vader 8 mission. If you're just joining us, liftoff occurred at 12.30 a.m. Eastern time from Space Launch Complex 40 in Florida. After liftoff, we also had successful main engine cutoff, stage separation, landing of our first stage, and confirmation of a good orbital insertion following the first MVAC burn. Coming up shortly, we'll have our second MVAC burn before payload deploy. MVAC ignition. With confirmation of MVAC ignition, we're looking forward to this burn lasting about a minute. This will be our last burn of stage two today before we deploy the Beta 8 payload. You can continue watching the telemetry for stage two in the bottom corner of your screen. expecting just about another 10 seconds of this burn. Tico 2. There we have confirmation of MVAC shutdown. Nominal orbit insertion. And with that confirmation of a successful second engine burn, we'll join you live to cover payload deployment in about five minutes. We'll see you in a few.
Welcome back to the Arabsat Beta 8 launch webcast. We've had a successful mission so far with liftoff at 12.30 a.m. Eastern, the successful landing of our first stage, and two relights and shutdowns of our second stage engine. Now we're coming up on our last major milestone, which is payload deployment. And that should happen here in just about 20 seconds. Our customer today, Arabsat, is a satellite operator and leading satellite services provider. The payload on board our second stage today, Beta 8, will provide connectivity over Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and Central Asia. Payload separation confirmed. There's that gorgeous view on your screen there of the successful deployment of the Arabsat Bader 8 payload. With that confirmation, we'll bring today's webcast to a close. We want to thank our customer Arabsat for entrusting us with today's mission and all of you for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.